Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about the anatomy of the midbrain. The midbrain, or the mesencephalon, is one of the three regions of the brainstem, the others being the pons and the medulla. It is the most superior part of the brainstem and acts as a conduit between the forebrain above and the pons and the cerebellum below. The midbrain is approximately two centimeters in length, making it the smallest of the three regions of the brainstem. As it ascends, it travels through the opening in the tentorium cerebelli. The midbrain is made up of two major parts, the paired cerebral peduncles and the tectum. The paired cerebral peduncles are found at the anterior surface of the midbrain, whereas the tectum is found at the posterior, at the back of the midbrain. The paired cerebral peduncles consist of the crura cerebri, or the crus cerebri, and the tegmentum. The crus cerebri and the tegmentum are separated by the substantia nigra. The crus cerebri is found at the most ventral area, the front of each cerebral peduncle and contains three descending pathways. The descending pathway means from the brain or the cerebral cortex out, the down through the brainstem. So these are usually motor information. These pathways include the corticospinal pathway, the corticonuclear pathway, and the corticopontine pathways. Collectively, these are called the longitudinal pontine fibers. The tegmentum is the central part of the midbrain and contains the reticular and cranial nerve nuclei, as well as several neural pathways. In particular, it contains the ocular motor nerve 3, trochlear nerve, which is cranial nerve number 4, and one of the nuclei of the trigeminal nerve, which is cranial nerve 5. You can also find what's called the red nucleus in this area. The red nucleus receives input from the cerebellum and cerebrum. Important output is via the rubrospinal tract. It is part of the extrapyramidal system and is important for regulating the activity of motor neurons. The other major part of the midbrain is the tectum, also known as the quadrigeminal plate. It consists of two pairs of relay nuclei, the superior colliculi and the inferior colliculi. Collectively, these are called the corpora quadrigemini. The superior colliculi are involved with the processing of visual information whilst the inferior colliculi are involved with the processing of auditory information. Some important tracts, as well as the descending tracts which we mentioned previously found in the crus cerebri, the most ventral part of the midbrain, the midbrain also provides passage for the ascending pathways, so up through the brainstem, the midbrain, to the brain, basically. And these include the superior cerebellar peduncles, which carries proprioceptive information into the cerebellum. Superior cerebral peduncles also carries information out of the cerebellum into the red nucleus. You also have the medial longitudinal fasciculus and the medial lemniscal tract. Next is blood supply. The vascular supply of the midbrain comes from the basilar artery and its branches. The major vessels are the posterior cerebellar artery and its peduncular branches, the superior cerebellar artery, the posterior choroidal artery, and the interpeduncular branches of the basilar artery. So, 
essentially majority of the blood supply is from the basilar artery and its branches. Now let's look at some clinical anatomy or clinical cases related to the anatomy we have learned, beginning with Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease is a neurodegenerative disorder that is caused by destruction of dopaminergic neurons in the pars compacta of the substantia nigra, located in the midbrain. It is also part of what's called the basal ganglia system, even though it's not really within that area. As dopamine is a neurotransmitter with an important role in movement and coordination, depletion of the dopamine results in the cardinal signs and symptoms of Parkinson's disease. These include resting tremor, bradykinesia, limb rigidity, and postural instability. The second clinical anatomy, which is important to note within the midbrain, is Argyll Robertson pupil, which describes a physical exam, which shows bilaterally small pupils that do not constrict when exposed to bright light. But the pupils do constrict when focused on a nearby object. The rostral midbrain, which is located near the sylvian aqueduct, is thought to be the most likely location of the lesion that causes Argyll Robertson pupil. Damage to this area would affect the efferent pupillary fibers located on the dorsal aspect of the Edinger Westphal nucleus, EWN. And essentially, this whole reflex results in no pupils to constrict, so there is no light reflex present. Argyll Robertson pupil is a highly specific sign of late stage syphilis. However, other causes include diabetes, midbrain lesions such as tumors, infarction, demyelination, as well as Wernicke's encephalopathy. Thank you for watching. There's a second part to this video which will look into the midbrain syndromes. So lesions that occur in the midbrain that cause classical signs and symptoms.